Hi guys, Seymour Duncan here. We're in a custom shop. MJ is over in the corner here, and Mr. Nels Klein from Wilco is here, and we're so honored to have him here. Uh, he's touring, he's got the Grammys coming up on a Sunday night, and he's in town. They're playing tomorrow night in Santa Barbara, which we're very excited about. And uh, tell the fans out there a little bit about uh, where you grew up and, and who were your influences growing up and everything. I'm sure that they'd love to know. All right. Well, I tend to be loquacious, so I'll try to make this brief, but first let me just say I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I first became aware of your pickups, in a, in a, they were in a, loaded into a Strat that I had, a 70s Strat that I played in the 80s in a rock band I was in called Block, and uh, when I, I asked what was in this guitar, it had the tapped pickups, and oh, I didn't really? know though, yeah. what was this whole tap thing, well anyway, I learned that this guy who had owned the guitar before had put your pickups in there and that was uh, besides your print ads and guitar player in the 70s that's how I became aware of your company and I've just always kind of been into your stuff. Oh that's so, cool, I appreciate that. So you know. but I grew up in West Los Angeles, California and I think uh, maybe another reason that there's this proximity right, to you and your yeah. company but uh, uh, grew up listening to surf music and rock and roll in the late 60s uh, particularly inspired at the time by folk rock and what I guess we could call psychedelic rock. Uh, I was listening to the Birds and the Rolling Stones and the Yardbirds and then my ultimate aha experience was uh, hearing Jimi Hendrix uh, Are You Experienced album. So uh, I grew from there in, in the high school years and getting interested in experimental music, jazz, progressive rock uh, this was when I decided I had to learn to play the guitar really, you know, like better. And I think that was when I started getting more interested in tone production. I always had terrible tone for years and years. I had no, no clue about such things. I was more interested in what notes I was playing, what chords, you know. Uh, but my circuitous path through uh, rock and roll and experimental jazz led me somehow to joining Wilco in 2004. And, uh, after work with Mike Watt and a group in Los Angeles, the Geraldine Fibbers, and then since 1989, my own groups. Uh, I play uh, experimental music still. I play so, sort of jazz, what passes for jazz these days still, and I play uh, rock and roll, folk rock, country rock with Wilco. And uh, we're on tour now, ending a tour, and uh, finally made it to Goleta. To the Santa Barbara Duncan here, factory. Yeah, the factory. Yeah. I'm playing several guitars with Wilco uh, that have Seymour Duncan pickups in them, and uh, one of them is the secret PAF guitar. It has, uh, basically sounds kind of like an SG because it has humbuckers that look like Jazzmaster pickups in it, and I have uh, those are really great. No one seems to know about those, and I have. Uh, Guitar. Well, certainly the antiquities are the, the, the pickups that made my life beautiful because they, the, the Duncan antiquities for jazz masters sound to me like the best jazz master pickups. Like my 59, Mike Watt, I call it the Watt 59, I bought it from Mike Watt. Um, just great sound, so I don't live in fear like I used to that I'd never be able to get this sound except in one guitar. So I'm playing those in my Rosewood Jazzmaster that you see on stage with Wilco, and uh, I've got Duncan's in a silver Jaguar that has a Charlie Christian and a very hot custom wow by possibly MJ here, yeah. um, Jaguar bridge pickup. And I'm still experimenting with some of these Charlie Christian pickups that are coming out of the custom shop here, and uh, basically telling everybody who likes Jazzmasters not to buy Fender stock jazz masters. Sorry, the guys at Fender are super nice. If you do, put antiquities in them. It'll just sound that much better. That was my commercial for you. I just well, I appreciate that. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we do a lot of experimentation here. As you can see on the back wall and stuff, these are this is like amazing. basic models, but what we can do with them, here, which is so cool, you know, and uh, uh, it's neat to have a, a place where you can come and, and do all kinds of uh, neat little experimental pickups, you know, which, Absolutely. which is really fun. So for me, it's uh, as we talk, you know, and and uh, now is your favorite instrument the Jazzmaster, you think, pretty much when you're yeah. playing on stage? And what string gauge do you use on them? 
I'm using 12s. 12s, wow. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I, that's out of my ball game. <laughs> well, you know, actually, um, I just saw my friend, um, God, well, I just saw my friend Bill Frizzell in Seattle, but now I'm just thinking, like, I don't think it was Bill. It was uh, somebody else I was talking to who uh, couldn't believe I was playing 12s and basically really? said he was slightly older than me and said, Wow. You'll, you'll be playing lighter in a few years. Oh, so really? When you really, get older yeah. like me, you're going to oh, lighten up those three games. Yeah. But actually, I think that because I play really hard, Really? For the most part, yeah. I, I like the string tension well, you, uh, on a jazz master. Yeah. Extra string length right. with the twelves, I can kind of you know bash away you and get, still get, get tone. It. it doesn't just choke. Which yeah, I just exactly. Can't, can't I mean, you have so much string movement there. I mean, you're really, really working the pickups and everything, which is cool. And that, and plus, I think the heavier strings really make the body resonate more too. You know, well, when yeah, you're playing it, so you get everything working, really working happy. together. Yeah, yeah it's very happy. definition. Yeah, then I learned. Amazing. That that Seymour here is a jazz master guy. He likes oh, prefers love, the jazz master, him, yeah. which makes uh, I think probably makes you unusual in the world of the uh, you know guitar market. I mean, certainly the guitar yeah. is more cachet now than it ever did uh, upon its introduction in I guess like '58 um, until the grunge right, years exactly. and Sonic yeah. Youth and and Dinosaur Jr. and television made it more popular. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, still, I don't think it has. Certainly, this doesn't have the place in the in the lore that, that right. Telecaster well, and Les Pauls have. You know, yeah, for me, it was uh, you know Bob Ogle from the Ventures. You know, he he just he knew how to work the tremolo and his nice chords, and and he was playing a jazz master. You know, I couldn't afford one when I was younger, and then uh, I started seeing and. Uh, Hearing from my uncle about this guy Roy Lanham, which uh, yeah, we're I, just I talking I, about, we I talked about him. Checking out stuff. Roy Lanham was the guitar player with the Sons of the Pioneers for a while in the band called the Fleetwoods, and then another great um, is uh, George Tomsko from the Fireballs. Okay, and he played that, that old white uh, jazz master, and uh, to me, you know, that sound is just incredible. You know what you can get out of it, but I think the jazz master. To this day, it still has the best tremolo unit, just so floating and so smooth and everything, you know. And, and plus, you get a lot of extra sounds out of it, like you do, which is so well, cool. You, you know how I like to work the strings it, you know? behind the bridge, I yeah. like all the different tones, and then crucially, you know, some people get really wrapped up in, uh, uh, like, oh, this neck feels a little wide, or this neck feels a little small, or whatever. And right. I actually don't care about that stuff so much. Yeah, that's I kind of make anything work. If a neck's too small, it's kind of hard for me because I have long, long fingers. fingers. Yeah. But, right. but basically, I don't really care. But then yeah. I picked up my first one was uh, of this ilk was the Jaguar. And I yeah. first picked one up, and it just felt great. You know, yeah. it was that's a shorter body scale. Shape. A little bit yeah. shorter scale. Yeah. And then when I got to the jazz master with the longer scale, then I'd found basically what I think what I was looking wow, for. Wow, that's great. Because it's not even just the the pickups and the string tension, it's the shape. It's the, the shape, shape of, of the neck, it. the shape oh, of the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Feels great. I know. To me. I know. To oh, me. I, me too. I My mean, whole thing is basically, uh, you know, young players come up to me now and they say, oh, I went, I went out and got a jazz master because of you. And I kind of uh, wince a little bit. Yeah. I figure like, well, it's really whatever works for you is what works. Yeah, you know, I think that's it, could good. Be, it could just be like like some rubber bands with some yeah. Duncan pickups on. Show my new guitar down here, MJ. You have to show him what we're going to be doing to it. Oh, uh, what's this? Yeah, look at this bugger here. Oh, is this one of the Harmony reissues? Yeah, we're going to be uh, showing something here. We're going to be making all these new pickups, and you can look what the inside looks like. Oh. It looks real beautiful here, but when you turn it over and you see what's really in it, you know, there's a lot of work that has to be done. But, <laughs> but MJ and I will we'll make this into a you know, Jimi Hendrix would play it if he was here. <laughs> well, actually, this brings up something that I have a guitar that no pickup seems to fit in, and maybe you guys can help me out with an old crown. That yeah, well, yeah. Japan, really, yeah. That, that my friend Norton Wisdom painted, and it's beautiful it and great? crazy, and it's a beautiful shape. It needs some pickups wow. and some sound. Yeah, that's something. Right. And do you have the existing pickups? Yeah. yeah. Well, we can rewind them. We can give them, you know, we can go ahead and make them sound oh, like okay. a duck pickup. Or we can build wow. inside. We can build the cool inside. Stuff in I think them we too. have it actually in the uh, in our Wilco world right now in a bag. Maybe I'll just. Uh, Give it to Adam tonight. tonight and just yeah. leave it with you guys for a while. Yeah, because I actually be cool. just had another guitar painted by Norton. Oh, so did you really? Yeah, yeah that's I great. I haven't seen it yet, but it's going to be screaming loud. Yeah. These guys has made it for me. So. Now, what kind of amps do you like using? 
Oh, well, I use the, uh, uh, with Wilco, I'm using a Schroeder, Tim Schroeder, Schroeder Tim and Schroeder, he's yeah. only made 30 of these amps. He just doesn't really make a living making amps, yeah. but he has a repair shop, um, Tim Schroeder Guitar Repair in Chicago, and he's a crazed, meticulous, overachiever genius guy, and yeah. the, the amps, really basically my thing is get a clean sound with a lot of low mids, not too yeah. much treble, and then I'll just do everything else from the floor. From the floor. I need to great. have... A, clean sound that I can rely on that's yeah. going to have warmth yeah. and still project. And so, uh, and I'm using this Marshall reissue uh, cabinet that they made, the JTM 45 yeah. offset head reissues. Right. I was using that, it was Jeff Tweedy from Wilco's uh, when I first joined and wow. I switched to the Schroeder head and kept the, the oh, 412 bottom. 412, yeah, that's great. It's got some limited edition Celestian bluebacks or something yeah. that they made just for this. It sounds really great. It's way too big. Really? Yeah, for me. I mean, I just think, oh my God, I'm terrified of my own hand. Oh, right. But it sounds so good, I can't change it. Yeah. And then when I'm traveling, playing my own music, it's an amp du jour. I don't, I don't travel with an amp, so I have to make whatever amp oh, I yeah. play through work. work. So yeah. I basically work. have got pretty good at dialing in sounds on uh, Fender Blackface Twin and Deluxe Reverb reissues, because that's yeah, what's everywhere. I know, that's but good. sometimes yeah. it's really some, some horrible surprise, you know, yeah. like, like a... Like a solid state rolling jazz uh, chorus or something. Well, yeah. no, I could. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll make it work. Will you I make can. it work? It yeah, still has good. that weird low bump. I know what it, that it, is. It does. It does. Yeah. I just nice. played with uh, uh, as a guest one song with the Flaming Lips on New Year's Eve in Oklahoma City because I was playing with uh, Yoko Ono Plastic Ono Band wow. and uh, uh, they use on stage on, on on Steve and Eric's side they have five. Jazz chorus Dude, like really? and wow. five Roland Cube keyboard oh amps yeah. in a rack. Holy mackerel! So you don't want to stand in front of that. Yeah, <laughs> but I did. Oh, geez, with earplugs on. Yeah. <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming to our factory here, and uh, man, this is an. You know, Evan is excited about tonight, and MJ, and she has some little surprises for you and everything. So we're all appreciative that you're here and uh, thank you for well for I'm just so happy to finally see our family this here has been in, in my mind in the works for so long and I'm just yeah. very happy to be here great and uh, everybody check out the site and see what these guys are making it's there's way more than I could ever imagined thank you thank you guys mm -hmm.